Okay, so there was this minor controversy on Twitter about the movie Captain Marvel regarding this deleted scene. Nice scuba suit. You need a ride, darling? How about a smile for me, huh? A smile? Yeah. I'm offering to help you. The least you could do is give me a smile. How about a handshake? <laughs> I'm Veers. People call me the Don. Wow. Here's a proposition for you. You're gonna give me your jacket, your helmet, and your motorcycle, and in return, I'm gonna let you keep your hand. Take it! Apparently, a lot of people think she looked like a jerk in that scene. Yeah, kinda. There's certainly some people who are using this as a topic as a bludgeon to push an agenda. I'm not gonna lie about that. Comparisons like this, however, somewhat miss the point. Let's not forget Thor being a would-be warmonger, or Doctor Strange refusing patience to keep his perfect record, or Rocket Raccoon being a self-sabotaging asshole, or Peter Quill compromising a mission to brutally kill dudes to get his Walkman. Those were character flaws that needed to be overcome. Strange needed to learn to fail. That's why his hero moment at the end here is about him learning to fail 10,000 times. Then you will spend eternity dying. Yes, but everyone on Earth will live. But you Thor's warmongering is something he gets over in the first movie. He destroys the Bifrost, cutting off access to the thing he wants to stop genocide. Peter didn't brutally kill anyone there. Stun, 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 knocked out. Regardless, the overall point is he needs to learn to let go of the past and let go of his mother's death. That's why he hallucinates his mother here and has to see past that to look towards the future. This is just a bad comparison. In Captain Marvel, this was not played like a flaw in the character. It comes across as a raw, raw girl power sort of thing. It does make her look like a jerk. And yes, people would be saying the same thing if she was a guy. I know this because they already did. And it turns out years later, Clark does a good job carrying that secret. Like when a bully inflicts no physical harm on him whatsoever, so he crucifies his truck, costing God knows how much money and damages. There's just less political BS there, because if I say Clark looks like a bit of a jerk there, nobody feels the need to defend him or extol him for political purposes. This did make me understand why I felt the character didn't work in Captain Marvel, so let me explain. One time I was remarking on how this one guy I knew went from a full-on libertarian free market capitalist kind of guy to a full-on anarcho-communist. Both communism and capitalism are utopian in their purest form. Practically, that almost never works out, though. Then, someone put it to me this way. People more often change what they think rather than how they think. And this makes perfect sense. The guy goes from one utopian ideology to another. I bring this up because I feel like this is a good metric for understanding how character arcs work. Since we already brought it up, let's look at Doctor Strange from his solo movie for a good example. He starts off his journey in a car wreck. What he thinks he needs to do is fix his hands. Among screenwriters, this would be called a want. What he actually needs to do is to learn how to fail. He starts off thinking, I need to fix my hands, so I won't be a failure. He leaves his arc thinking, I'm glad I learned how to fail. Now, how disappointing would it be if his character arc left with Turns out, my toe was the part of me that was broken. Glad I fixed that. The first way, he fundamentally changed how he was thinking. The latter, he just changed what his focus was on. I think Captain Marvel's arc was like the latter. She started off the story thinking, I must destroy the evil scroll race, and leaves it basically thinking the same thing, but now about the Kree. She changed what she thought, not how she thought. She's still engaged in a cognitive distortion of black and white thinking. This is a lot less satisfying of an arc, as I feel like the character doesn't really change much. This isn't as bad as, say, Black Panther, where the hero learns a control fallacy, internal in this case, and starts blaming himself for the actions of another person. He's a monster of our own making. As it seems like an act of regression played off as growth, 
again, stoic nature here, but you can't blame yourself for the actions of another person. You have an effect, but it's ultimately up to them. At least my, in my estimations, the Kree actually seem to be the more black option. So there is more growth going on. It's just not healthy. Is this the worst movie ever? Again, no. Like I said, the growth is just not meaningful growth. And as stupid as this controversy is, at least it gave me a chance to think about a movie I was never going to think about again. I guess it's true what Shalon said. Bad art does sometimes do more good than good art.